What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you a $1000 complete gaming setup. This is a full setup including the PC, monitor, keyboard, mouse, headset, and desk mat. The only thing pictured that's not included is the desk itself. For $1000 you're getting a pretty legit setup that will give you a perfect entrance into PC gaming with a fast computer, high refresh rate display, mechanical keyboard, and a number of other items to really make the setup come together. As you can tell, this is kind of a white themed setup, but all the white items can also be purchased in black and I'll be linking everything you see in the description below. So I figured I should talk about the PC first as this is taking up the majority of the budget. This guy right here is my most recent $750 gaming and streaming PC that I did a full build guide on. I'll go over the specs and performance briefly in this video, but for the full details and a guide on how to put it together, you can head to the original video about this PC linked in the description. So just to give you a rough idea of how this system performs, when playing esports titles like Fortnite, Rainbow Six, Valorant, and CSGO, you're going to be able to get 144 plus FPS, which is great for competitive play, and if you're wanting to play AAA titles, then games like Borderlands 3, Far Cry 6, Horizon Zero Dawn, and even Cyberpunk are all playable on this system at high settings with 60 plus FPS. Beyond this, the system is also very good at streaming gameplay to sites like Twitch, but if you are wanting to stream, I would recommend recommend picking up a second monitor. In terms of specs, this PC is using the new Intel Core i3-12100F with 4 cores and 8 threads. This is considered by most to be the best budget gaming CPU on the market right now, and for the $100 price tag you're getting some insane performance. This is slotting into the Gigabyte H610M S2H, which is a basic motherboard but it has all the features we need like two DIMM slots, an M.2 slot for our SSD, and a 16x PCIe slot for our graphics card. Cooling the CPU is just the included Intel stock cooler. This is the new design that actually features a copper slug and it looks much better than the old design in my opinion. For RAM, I went with a 2x8GB kit of this Oloy DDR4 RAM that runs at 3200MHz CL16. 16GB is plenty for modern gaming, streaming, and even light video editing. For the SSD, I went with a 500GB WD Blue SM570. This is an NVMe drive with advertised read speeds of up to 3500MB per second. This is a good deal at only about $50, and because it is in the ultra compact M.2 form factor, it takes seconds to install. For the GPU, I went with the Gigabyte RTX 3050 Gaming OC. 3050s can be had for at or below $350 right now, which is a decent deal. For max gaming performance, you can go for an RX 6600 for a similar price, but the 3050 does offer some nice features like DLSS and the NVENC encoder, which are things the 6600 does not have. Either way you go, you're going to get great performance, and I have no regrets getting this 3050 as its performance is pretty darn good. To power the system, I went with this. This Asus Tough Gaming 550 watt unit. This is 80 plus bronze rated, has all black sleeve cables, and is considered to be one of the best budget power supplies on the market right now. It has a 6 year warranty, and overall, I think it works well in this build. Finally, the case is this DIY PC ARGB Q6-W. For the current going rate of $45, this case comes in black and white and offers some insane value. It has a toolless tempered glass side panel, power supply basement, an included RGB fan, and this cool RGB front panel. Both the fan and the panel are configured with a built-in controller and button in the case. This is my new favorite budget case and can highly recommend it as building in it was very simple. All in all, for $750 you're getting a beast of a system and again for full details head to the original video about it linked in the description. So with an immediate $750 taken out of our $1000 budget, I had to get pretty creative about how I was going to spend the remaining $250. The first thing I wanted to pick out was a monitor. This PC is perfect for high refresh rate 1080p gaming, so going for a monitor with a refresh rate of 120Hz or more was a necessity in my opinion. After looking at a bunch of options, I decided to go with the Biotech GFV22CB. For $150, you're getting a 22-inch 1080p display with a 144Hz refresh rate. It's VESA compatible if you want to arm mount it in the future. The included stand is pretty durable and it is even G-Sync compatible which is great as we do have an NVIDIA graphics card. In terms of display quality and performance, this is a pretty standard entry-level VA panel. It gets reasonably bright. Colors look decent and viewing angles aren't bad either. One other nice thing is that Biotech has a zero tolerance dead pixel policy, which is great as many manufacturers won't replace a monitor if it only has one or two dead pixels. 
22 inches is a little small, but for the 1080p resolution, it keeps things looking nice and crisp. The physical design is pretty nice with thin bezels, a thin overall design, and a neutral color scheme, which will look good in most any setup. It has two HDMI 1.4 ports, a DisplayPort 1.2 port, an audio out jack, and the DC input for the included power brick. The only adjustment comes in the form of forward and back tilt, but again, it's face it compatible, so you can upgrade to a different stand or mount in the future. Overall, for $150, this is one of the best budget gaming monitors out there. With the monitor selected, I decide the next thing to pick out were the keyboard and mouse. I only had $100 left in the budget, so I couldn't get anything fancy, but what I went with is still a great combo. For the keyboard, I went with this Iyusu K620. This board can be purchased in a number of different color schemes and are always on sale with coupons bring the final purchase price to between $20 and $25. I picked up this all white one with blue switches for only $20. These blue switches are clicky, but there are also tactile brown switches and linear red switches available. I kind of like blue switches on cheaper boards like this, and if you're wanting that mechanical typewriter sound, then this is the way to go. Just be warned, it is pretty loud. Here's a quick sound test. Now while this board is okay in its stock form, it's actually upgradable and I use an upgraded version of this board daily on my test setup. It has Automo hot swap sockets so you can pull out and replace switches, just make sure they're Automo hot swap compatible. Later down the line you could throw in some new switches, a fresh set of keycaps, some case foam, and get a keyboard that looks and sounds like this. It only has static backlighting in this kind of cool blue color, but it has these really nice side RGB lights that are fully controllable. The cable is gray and non-removable, which is a bummer, but at this price point is to be expected. For a budget board and for a setup like this, this keyboard is a great pick in my opinion. For the mouse, I looked at a bunch of options and ended up settling on a Razer Death Adder Essential in white for right around $20. But again, this does also come in black like the keyboard. This white colorway looks super clean and for playing games this mouse works great. It has a 6400 DPI optical sensor that tracks well and all the buttons are easy to reach and satisfying to press. This is slightly larger than what I'm used to, but it's not obnoxiously big and it's relatively light, which again is great for gaming. This is a good value for $20 in my opinion, but if you have a different budget gaming mouse you like then let me know in the comments below. Moving on to the mouse pad, I knew I wanted a large desk mat. After deliberating, I decided to go for this topographic looking desk mat for $20. It's not huge, but is big enough for both the keyboard and the mouse, and I think the design looks really nice. This is an area where I'd say to go for something that catches your eye, as there are a ton of different options out there. This one is relatively well made and will be linked in the description below. With all that picked out, I had $40 left in the budget to tackle the audio side of things. This monitor doesn't have built-in speakers, so I figured the best option was to get a gaming headset. After looking at a ton of different options, I went with this Geco Zyberia USB headset. Audio is super subjective. Is this going to be as good as a $150 Sennheiser headset? No, but at under $30 with coupon, this headset offers acceptable audio quality in terms of both output through the drivers and input through the mic. I certainly wouldn't use the built-in mic for content creation, but for Discord calls and in-game voice chat, it works great, and here's a quick audio test. This is a sound test of the built-in headset microphone, and overall, it sounds okay. This is a sound test of the built-in headset microphone, and overall, it sounds okay. One other nice thing is that it has inline controls for mic and headphone volume, along with a mute switch. In terms of comfort, the pads are nice and thick, there's a decent amount of adjustment. I would describe the clamping force as moderate, it stays on your head but shouldn't get uncomfortable when wearing it through long gaming sessions. All in all, I'm pretty impressed with this $30 headset, as it sounds decent, is pretty comfortable, and overall gets the job done. With the headset picked out, I had right around $10 left in the budget, so I decided to pick up a basic headphone stand. You can go for one like this one, but I'll also link an under desk mount one that is a good option for freeing up desk space. All in all, for $1,000, you're getting a pretty functional and clean gaming setup. 
all the items in this work well together and the overall experience of using the system is awesome. The main display I game on is only 100Hz and I can actually notice the difference going to a 144Hz panel like this one in fast paced games like Valorant. Obviously there are a million different ways I could have spent this budget so if you would have switched out one or more of these items let me know what you would have went with in the comments below. So yeah guys I think this wraps this video up. I've never done one of these full setup videos and I'm interested to hear your feedback. If you liked the video give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as always this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.